Hi, welcome to Take 5, where we daily consider devotional thoughts from Oswald Chambers' book, My Utmost for His Highest. Today is November 28th, and the title of today's devotional is The Riches of the Destitute, Being Justified Freely by His Grace, Romans 3, verse 24. The Hebrew religion is one of works, of keeping the law. This is what makes salvation through Christ absolutely unbelievable to them. This type of doubt describes Paul on the road to, to Emmaus when he was saved. He was one who believed being right with God came through works, through the keeping of the law. The Hebrews were and are lost people, and the unbelieving world is their kith and kin. For to them both it seems impo- for to them both it seems impossible that only faith is required to be saved. Dr. Chambers begins, the gospel of the grace of God awakens an intense longing in the human soul and an equally intense resentment because the truth that it reveals is not palatable or easy to swallow. There's a certain pride in people that causes them to give and to give, but to come and accept a gift is another thing. I will give my life to martyrdom. To martyrdom. I will dedicate my life to service. I will do anything, but do not humiliate me to the level of the most hell-deserving sinner and tell me that all I have to do is accept the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. This doubt is fed to mankind by Satan, disbelief that the only requirement for salvation is faith. It was for this cause that Paul had to battle the Judaizers, who were convinced that one had to become a Jew prior to becoming a Christian. Salvation by faith doesn't seem possible to the lost person who sees being right with God as requiring good works of human effort needing to be put into it. People want to think if they do more good stuff than bad stuff, they will earn God's favor. This is the manner by which even Christians deal with sin in their lives. The idea, if I do more good than bad, then God will still bless me. It depends on my effort. O.C. says we have to realize that we cannot earn or win anything from God through our own efforts. We must either receive it as a gift or do without it. The greatest spiritual blessing we receive is when we come to the knowledge that we are destitute. There are no works of my own I can do that I can possibly do that will impress God. We are sinners who have missed the bullseye of God's holiness. Chambers says, until we admit our neediness on God, that he is powerless to work within us, for he does not force himself on anyone. Salvation is a gift to be received. Dr. C. remarks that God can do nothing for us as long as we think that we are sufficient in and of ourselves. We must enter into his kingdom through a door of destitution. Particular sins to be vanquished are in the area of pride or independence. Until then, the professor warns us, God can do nothing for us. It may be wondered as to when does one finally give up to God. O.C. responds, it is only when we get hungry spiritually that we receive the Holy Spirit. You must come to the end of yourself, to the point of realizing your poverty and your greatest need being God. We don't deserve God, don't deserve salvation, and that is what makes his forgiveness so wonderful. Chambers says the gift of the essential nature of God is placed and made effective in us by the Holy Spirit. He imparts to us the quickening life of Jesus, making us truly alive. The final sentence is one of those Chambers classics. He's telling us that God takes that which was beyond us and places it within us, and immediately, once the beyond has come within, it rises up to the above, and we are lifted into the kingdom where Jesus lives and reigns. Christ told the Pharisee Nicodemus, in order to enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Birth is not accomplished on one's own. Babies are unable to birth themselves. They are completely dependent on those surrounding them. You will never be able to be right with God by your own merit, credit, or abilities. As with a baby, you must depend on God to accomplish your new birth. But you must depend on God. If you have not done so, come now to Jesus with empty hands. Whoever believes 
may believes may in him have eternal life. Thanks for being here today. Now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live our utmost for his highest. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.